Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So this morning I had an inquiry from a subscriber who actually called me and he said, look, I've got my wife in intensive care for 40 days. She has had a cardiac arrest, an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, and she possibly sustained a hypoxic brain injury. She now has a tracheostomy. The Glasgow Coma Scale is around a 10, and even though he says he's not the medical power of attorney, um, because there is no paperwork in place, the ICU team asked him to sign a DNR, and the ICU asked him to consent to medical procedures such as tracheostomy, PEG, and so forth. He also asked for access to medical records, and he can't get it because the ICU is telling him he's not the medical power of attorney. So here is the, the first question that I had to my subscriber is, you know, how come you are, you are allowed to give consent to potentially um, risky procedures such as tracheostomy pick? How come you are able to consent to what could, could potentially cost your loved one's life, i.e. the DNR? And they're not giving you access to medical records, which means you can't really make an informed decision when it comes to tracheostomy pick and also to DNR. So here's another example how hospitals and ICUs are trying to walk all over families in intensive care if you're not prepared, if you don't ask the right questions, and if you don't know what to do. So the first thing that this particular gentleman needs to do is to get the power of attorney situation sorted and he should also revoke the DNR as quickly as possible. If he can sign it, he can also revoke it. The other challenge this client is facing is that the ICU is telling him um, his wife will be sent to LTAC in about three or four days and because he's not the medical power of attorney, it's their decision and he can't do anything about it. Again. How come he can sign for a DNR and he can give consent to a tracheostomy and a PEC, but he can't challenge the, um, the transfer to LTAC, which he's opposing, right? Again, a, a very good example of how hospitals are trying to, bullies, trying to bully families in intensive care, especially if you don't know what you don't know, and that is exactly the biggest challenge. Families in intensive care don't know what they don't know. They don't know what to look for, they don't know what questions to ask, they don't know their rights, and they don't know how to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And that's what we can help you with here at intensivecarehotline.com. The other funny thing that's, you know, well, the, the prospect thinks it's coincidental. I actually don't think it's coincidental. All of a sudden, now that they wouldn't want to move her to LTAC, for the first day, in 40 days she had time off the ventilator for about five hours makes you wonder whether that is just coincidental or whether it's been timed by the ICU to push for the LTAC discharge again you need to have someone on your side on your team that can can interpret clinical information that can ask all the right questions that can interpret medical records that can talk to the doctors and nurses ask all the right questions right that is critical for you so that is my quick tip for today I hope that helps and you get the message. Um, if you have a loved one in intensive care, go to our website, intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of the website or send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. Also, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. And if you want a medical record review, go click on the link below. Now. Also, share this video with your friends and families, like the video, give it a thumbs up, um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have from this video and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I will talk in to you in a few days.